Hi, it's Richard Gain here, and I'm going to make a short video about why I love Onshape and why I hate Onshape. I love the tool, I love using it, I hate the fact that they've removed any private files. I really wish they would come up with uh, an account for hobby users that just allowed people a small number of private files that they can use for customers who don't want to share their designs yet. I'm not a big commercial organisation. I'm never going to be able to earn enough from 3D printing to pay for uh, the full uh, subscription account. I've tried it and it didn't work. So here we are. Um, that's why I hate Onshape and now I'm going to show you why I love Onshape. This is a, uh, a phone stand that I designed the other night. Uh, it's not my original idea. I found um, this design on Amazon, which I quite like the look of. And printing it on its side like this, it'll be nice and printable, with the exception of these projections that are designed to hold the phone. They're a horizontal uh, projection from the side when you're printing it in this orientation and of course that won't work without some support material in between. I like support free designs and so I'd like to redesign this in a similar style but um, without the need for support. They've helpfully provided lots of dimensions here. I'm slightly going to change these. Um, so the gap here being 15 millimeters is too wide. My iPhone is only 10 millimeters across, so I, I'm going to make that a 10 millimeter gap. But the other dimensions are about right. Um, with the exception of the thickness of the material, this is an aluminium case, and printing it in plastic, I've discovered with my first iteration that it, it, the plastic is too springy. So um, increasing the thickness to uh, four millimeters um, should make it a little bit more rigid. Anyway, this is the design and I'll show you right away um, how I did it. So starting from the top, I decided that I wanted to uh, make the design parametric. Um, it means that you can quickly come back and change features about the design just by changing one number without having to go in and uh, edit the design. So the gap for the phone is going to be 11 millimeters and the thickness of the material is going to be 4 millimeters. So I've already defined two variables uh, called gap and thickness. The next step was to create a sketch and If I do edit sketch, view normal, you can see how I've uh, I've used the same dimensions here. So 95 millimeters across, 85 millimeters tall. This one here is hash thickness. So that's going to be four millimeters because it's using that variable. This one here is the hash gap plus two times the thickness because that's the gap and there's a thickness there, a thickness there, so two lots of the thickness plus the gap and it works out that that is 19 millimeters. Nice that you can put uh, formulae in as well as just variables. So I'll accept that sketch We then uh, extrude that by the width that we want. I made that 60 millimeters. Have another sketch on the um, back plane with a. I use. I chose a hexagon instead of a circle because a hexagon will print better. extrude a hole through that
then I decided I'd have a, a, a mid plane uh, midway between these two faces because what I want to do here is cut out this section um, but instead of having two tabs like in the original design what I realized was that if I could make it print in this orientation but with the um, cutout as a slope starting from here and going up round the back and then back up again in this direction ending up here it should print smoothly um, without any support and still achieve the objective of having a hole in the bottom so that you can plug the charger into the phone and what I what I realized was that probably what I needed was a spiral um, so if I could wrap a spiral around the, bo the base here and then reverse the spiral coming back up here and use that as a way of cutting into here and then removing a chunk that would probably give me uh, the effect that I wanted so the the starting point for creating that spiral was to have somewhere to position it in the midpoint here so here's my mid plane and if I put a, a, a sketch in the center there I can position that so that this axis is exactly um, centered so my spiral will, will move around the center point of this axis here Now I don't want the spiral to start on the top here because I still need the tab to be uh, holding the phone. So I need it to start a little bit in and I need it to move up to just before the centre. So I've created another plane here which is where I want my, my cylinder to start. Because you put a, a spiral on a cylinder. So onto this new plane here, I've simply drawn a circle and I'm going to extrude that downwards to be a cylinder. Not uh, as a solid body though, I've, I've done extrude as a surface um, because I don't actually want this to be a part of the model. So let me show you extrude. Instead of extrude solid, I've chosen extrude surface and I've extruded that circle and I've done it to a depth of uh, 48 millimeters which is um, the same distance in from the opposite end next step is to create my helix turn that on so it's visible and by playing around with the different parameters that you get with uh, adding a helix I was able to position it exactly where I wanted so I wanted it to start so if I drew a line from the center the axis past that corner that's where my helix would begin and I, I used uh, a start angle of 80 degrees, which I discovered was the best position for moving that point to just where I wanted it to start. Then the number of revolutions, in this case 0.6 of a revolution, um, took it round to this point here, which is where I wanted the 
helix to stop and a height of 20 millimeters takes it to just before the halfway point because I'm then going to loop over and put a, a mirror image of the helix on the back. So there's my helix. I'll put a mid plane um, actually I'm going to do it to this one. So I've added a mid plane down the centre of the phone stand because I want to reflect about it. Um, and there's my mirror command which creates the second copy of the curve. So I've now got two copies of the helix starting at uh, opposite sides. I'm just going to hide this part for the moment. Bring that back to the centre. And now I need to join up those two ends. And I can do that by simply adding uh, a bridging curve. This is now quite uh, experimental territory for me. Um, I've been looking at what's available in this new drop down here and things like projected curves, bridging curves, bridging curves, composite curves uh, are all uh, quite new additions and uh, really quite powerful. So there's my bridging curve I've added and that becomes curve 3 and it simply joins the two ends of those points in a nice um, smooth curve. Again the um, let's have a look at that the properties of the bridging curve I've used match tangent and also adjusted the magnitude so that it looks like a nice smooth curve um, but lots of options there for uh, adjusting it to make it exactly what I wanted. Now I wanted to make a copy of that curve um, on the inside so here's my uh, stand, here's the part and you'll see that this cylinder wraps around the bottom of the stand here. I want another copy of this uh, on the inside there. So the easiest way to do that is to copy that and transform it by scaling it inwards. Um, to do that you have to specify uh, how you want to scale it. So I've added a make connector and then my transform command there we are has created you can see there's another smaller copy of my uh, double helix on the inside now and this is the really clever part I need to join the two ends well I, I can use bridging curves for that and um, if you add a bridging curve with a match position instead of match tangent or match curvature you get a right angle so it just jumps straight across which is exactly what I wanted. So I put match position on both ends of my bridging curve and I did the bridging curve one, one at the top one at the bottom and now I didn't know this existed, but it was exactly what I was looking for. This is why I love Onshape. I've now created a knife that spirals. Let's let's hide that um, that cylinder up there. There we go. Let's turn this the other way up. And this is what exactly what I had in my head. So I've created this dark blue surface as a knife which is going to cut round 
through the bottom of this part and cut the stand into two pieces. So having created this, um, uh, f filled in the gap in the, uh, in the space and made the, made the surface, I can now use the split command and my phone stand has now become two parts. And if I hide that part, you can see that there's my cutout. Just what I wanted. So the rest of it is just some fillets to uh, smarten up the edges a little bit. I can hide these um, curves. And that's the design that I'm going to print. Turning it like that, you should be able to see now that the 3D printer will start from the bottom. It'll steadily climb up this spiral and then back again. And it shouldn't have any problem printing that level of overhang without any support material, which is just what I was aiming for. So lots of new features up there. And um, I really appreciated that I didn't have to do any searching using the help function. Uh, I just explored and found exactly what I was looking for. I love it. There we go. I'll uh, put a little um, extra photo on the end of this video just to show you the uh, print if that comes out all right. And uh, thanks for watching.